I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. And today I'm going to help you guys out with your street photography. I'm going to talk about some of the most common mistakes I see people make with their street photography and I'm going to tell you how to fix those and I'm going to help you with your skills. So if you want to sharpen your skills as a street photographer, this is the episode for you. <music> So as always guys, don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com where I've got presets like this one that will not make you a better photographer, but they will add some popular images. And for those of you out there that are interested in improving your photography, I've got a variety of one-on-one -on -one educational packages out there. They're open to all levels of photographers and all genres of photography. Check all those out at justinmott.com. So just a quick plug to my friends over at Moft here. I love their stuff. I used it before they actually like sponsored me and gave me stuff to review, but uh, just a quick plug here for any of you guys out there that are interested in like working on the go or just desk organization. They make cool stuff. I've talked about in the past, but they just recently sent me over this new laptop stand here. It just sticks onto the back of your laptop I'm using my MacBook Pro here, a little origami folding thing here. But this one's really cool because not only does it fold up, put you in a nice ergonomic position when I'm typing, but it's also a cooling pad. So it keeps your laptop nice and cool and it prevents it from overheating. So they've got all sorts of cool stuff. They just sent me this too, this little magnetic system here. Their magnetic system works fantastic. This thing folds up nicely. I kind of swap in and out. So I've got this magnetic stand here that folds up. I've got this other one here that I keep on the back here. Really strong, really sturdy, just kind of folds there. So you can kind of, you can put your device in different angles. Like, cause I'm, I'm working on the road. I'm working in my downstairs YouTube studio. I'm working in my upstairs home office. And I've got my smart desk mat here too. So it's props up here. I got my laptop plugged in here. So this is like my base for everything. I got my phone here, which I use as a remote trigger and extra screen here for my camera here. So anyway, they make a lot of cool stuff. Check them out. I've got an affiliate link in the description box below. Also, if you're just interested in gear that I use in general, I've got a whole gear page. You can check that out. I'll put a link up here. Okay, let's get into why you're here. Street photography. Sorry to put you guys through that, but I gotta make a living too here. You know what I mean? So I've been shooting street photography my entire career. I, even before I started my career, that's where I fell in love with photography. I lived in San Francisco. I was going to school to be a photojournalist, but I used to just wander the streets of my camera and shoot street. And it's a great city to do that as well. And then I'm in another great city now. When I moved to Hanoi, same thing. When I moved here, I just would wander the streets of my camera and shoot. So, you know, street photography is at the heart of who I am as a photographer. As I started doing my assignment work, all my New York Times work, there's an element of street photography in just about every assignment I do, whether that's reportage, whether that's travel assignments, business assignments, even in my commercial work, there's an element of street photography. So it's at the core of who I am. And through my one-on-one -on -one classes, I've seen a lot of people interested in street photography. I don't know why it's taken me so long to talk about this more. Like I'm definitely qualified, not pat myself on the back here, but I am, I just, I don't know. I know more of you are interested in street than you are reportage and documentary. And I'm interested in both, but my channel, I've talked mainly about documentary work, but I really street photography is in all my documentary work. So, you know, I did my recent episode about street photography. You guys liked it, got a lot of comments, got great feedback. So I wanted to do more on it. I wanted to talk more about it. And through my one-on-one -on -one classes, I noticed a lot of you were into it as well. So that also sparked it. It also made me notice a lot of you were making the same mistakes. Some of the mistakes that I made early on in my career and I just want to help you guys out. I want you guys to improve. This ended up being quite long when I was scripting it out. So I'm going to make this a two parter today. I'm just going to talk about five of the most common mistakes you guys out there making in your street photography and stay tuned to the end guys. Cause the last one is probably the biggest mistake. The last one's the one you don't want to do. Yeah. I'm sort of like using the YouTube algorithm to keep you hooked here, but stay tuned for the last one. It's a good one. You guys are doing it. You guys need to stop doing it. So wait around, wait for that last one. Okay. So the first mistake I see people make is copying others. Now, you know, early on in your journey in photography, oh, my friend gave me crap recently for calling something my journey, but I think we're all on different journeys. So screw him on your journey in photography, no matter what genre you're into. But today we're going to talk about street photography. You know, when you're learning, you're studying others, you're looking at their work. When I first started my career, I was heavily influenced by Magnum photographers and the agency seven and specifically James Noctway. I love James Nockway, his work, his book right there. It's a fantastic book. If you've never seen his book, Inferno, it's gigantic, but his work is very powerful. And I was influenced by it. And you know, you're gonna, when you see the shot that he's taken or see that composition that he's taken and, and you have a chance to take it, it's so tempting to want to do it. And, and you do it and I've done it and you get excited and then you get proud of yourself. But you know, that's the beginning part. At some point you got to cut the tie. At some point you need to become your own photographer. You need to develop your own style. It's so hard to do. And I totally get it because you know, you've looked at some of these photographers work, you see it on Instagram, you see the websites and you just, you see them on YouTube and you're just like, Oh, that's great work. And they get all the applause. They get the like a sponsorship. They win these awards. And then you take a similar shot. So you're like, yeah, I can do it too. The thing is, is, is they were influenced 
by other people, sure, but the reason they became great is because they went on to be their own photographer. They had their own vision, their own way to capture street photography, their own way to expose, their own types of projects. I understand the temptation early on. I understand people that might just say to me, well, I'm an amateur, so who cares? But you know, even as an amateur, like anything, you're doing it to grow, you're doing it to get better. So if you wanna develop your own style, you wanna get better in your photography, you wanna get better in your street photography, start a project. You know, start a project, have a vision, have a concept, and, and work on that project. If you have a project going at all times, you're gonna be able to resist the temptation of just every time you go out taking those shots that are in your Rolodex, taking those shots that you've been influenced by. If you have a project, you're gonna go and take those shots maybe the first day, the second day, but eventually they're gonna wear off and eventually you're gonna to start to develop who you are as a photographer and, and develop your own style, not just like what you take and how you take it, but how you sequence it, what you focus on, what your project's about, what you're trying to say with your work, all that's really important. So stop copying others, be influenced early on, look at other photographers' work, totally understand it, but stop being proud of yourself for taking the same shots that they've taken and start to take your own shots. And the way you're gonna do that and the way you're gonna learn that and the way you're gonna get better at that is working on a personal project. So the next one sort of piggybacks off of the last one and this one is stop it with the cliches. We all do it, we're all guilty of it. Everyone wants to do the juxtaposition shot, street photography, I'm not gonna go through like all of them, but you know what they are and you just can't resist them. I see it, I see it in my portfolio reviews. I see it when people send a link to their Instagram accounts or their website, everyone has it. And if you go through my website, don't, uh, but there's probably some of these in there as well. But throughout my entire career, I've tried to weed them out slowly. Work to weed out the cliches in your mind and in your portfolio. Everyone's got the same shots, the black and white granny shots of the crow on the wire or the pigeons at the park or bonus points if you've got the pigeons all flying off or even more bonus points if you've got the pigeons flying off and the image is still sharp but you had like that 15th of a second shutter speed so they're all kind of going everywhere or the juxtaposition, oh, that's new and this is old. Oh, that's a young person and that's an old person. Oh, that's a new building, that's an old building. Like, I, I get it, some of these are timeless and it's okay to like sprinkle them in, but don't make that the core ingredients of who you are as a photographer. Again, the way you're gonna work this out, the way you're gonna weed this out of your portfolio, weed this out of your mind, weed this out of your style as a photographer, is working on your personal projects, working on your craft, and developing your own new shots so you're not so reliant on all those cliches. Okay, the next mistake I see people make is not having enough patience. Now, weirdly enough, I am not a very patient person in real life. My wife has told me that before, but I've worked on myself, and I think I'm a lot more patient these days. But in my photography, I'm very patient. Uh, maybe that's why, maybe that's a good excuse, maybe that's why I don't have patience in outside of my photography life, because I've have so much patience in my photography. That's my next defense if there's an argument that comes up about that. I'll save that one. Patience in street photography especially, you need to have it. If you wanna get better, you need to figure out how to be patient. Okay, I'm gonna break this down into like three types of photographers. Let's call the first one the okay photographer. The okay photographer is going to recognize light, see light, and when they do so, they're gonna stop and capture it. Now the good photographer is going to see that same light as the okay photographer. They're gonna recognize it, see it, and then they're gonna wait for one of those cliches to happen within that light and then move on. Now the great photographer, the one I want you guys to develop into, is going to plan and predict where the light's gonna be. And then they're gonna sit on that light and wait for the unknown to happen within it. So that's the difference. So those are the three differences there. I want you guys to build up to being the great. Now, if you do the okay version of that, you might get like 50 eh, photos. If you do the good version of that, you might get like eh, maybe 15 to 20, eh, not bad photos. But if you sit and wait, you do the great part, you're gonna get that one wow shot. Now, I will take one wow shot over 20, not bad shots, any day of the week, and you guys should as well. Now, the next tip also relates to the last tip. I'm doing a good job like kind of relating these into each other. That's why I'm gonna have to do part two because I've got so many out there because you guys are making so many mistakes. The next mistake I see people make is that you're carrying too much gear. Now, it's way easier to be patient. It's way easier to be that great photographer that I talked about if you have less baggage. Now, I don't just mean physical baggage, but having a bunch of lenses, having a bunch of cameras in your bag is also mental baggage. Every time you go out and shoot, your mind will be thinking like, oh, what, what would it be like if I took out my film camera? What would it be like if I used the 50 instead of the 35? Or if I used my zoom lens or whatever? Be simple so that you can capture the complicated. I think I'm, I'm kind of profound today. I don't know what's going on. I'm not, I know I'm not, but, but you know what I mean, right? Like carrying all that gear with you, obviously physically it's gonna like weigh you down because you're taking it with you, you're worried about it. But really the reason is the mental part. Again, if you're thinking so much about that bag, I've talked about this before, but I just wanna emphasize this point because it's so important. 
You've got all that gear, you're second guessing yourself, you're switching lenses, you're switching cameras, all that stuff. Simplify your kit. When I go out and shoot street photography, I've got my Leica M10D, and I've got my 35 millimeter, and that's it. And sometimes I might want to go out with a longer lens, sometimes I might want to go out with a wider lens, but I keep it very simple so that I can capture the complicated. So it's okay to have a lot of this gear if you like to collect and that stuff and switch it up, but when you go out, just simplify yourself. Remove that clutter in your bag, and you'll be more clear inside your head, and your photos will be better. That's it. Now the last tip for today, I was going to narrow it down to two. I told you guys to wait for this one, but I think I'm going to wait and talk about light in the next one because that's a good lead in and light's so important. I wanted to lead off with that in the next one. But the last one here, this is one all of you ask me all the time. Whenever I do my mailbag series on my Instagram account, at AskMott, this is what people ask me. They say, how to not be scared? And I see it all the time in the work. Even if people don't tell me, I can see it in your work. I can see people afraid to get close to the subject. Now, unfortunately, there's no magic fix here. I see photographers that like to stand back and shoot from far back. They don't need to get in people's faces. And that's fine. That's all the learning process with your personal project, learning who you are as a photographer, learning your style as a photographer, but don't necessarily let your personality or your fears dictate your style as a photographer, if that makes sense. Like, if you are afraid, if you are shy to get close to people, but you know you want to, you know you want those kind of emotions in your shots, then work on it. There's no magical fix. Instead of just like stepping away and saying, no, I just like to pull back. If you really do like to get close, work on it. It's like anything else. When I started my career, I was extremely shy. I just was. Like, we had to share a working class. I didn't like that. I had to go out in the streets and get close to people. I had to because I wanted to make a career out of this. I couldn't be a photojournalist if I couldn't get close. I mean, that was just like what they drilled in my head. So I did it out of necessity. Now, I know a lot of you amateurs are like, well, I don't have to. It's not my work, right? But you're here, you're watching because you want to get better. You're investing in your camera equipment because you want to get better. You want to get good. And a couple pieces of advice I would say to get better at this is one, try doing like a documentary about a person. Um, if you've never done that, I always give that as an assignment for my, my one-on-one -on -one workshops. It's like, go out and shadow someone for the day. Like, ask their permission. It's going to be kind of weird if you shadow someone and don't tell them. Don't do that. I don't want anyone getting arrested like you're in the bushes. But ask someone. Someone that does, like, a friend. And maybe they're a musician, an artist, or whatever they do. Any, anything that you're interested in. Like, ask someone permission. See if you can shadow them for the day. Most people say yes. And that, that'll just get you used to photographing people and getting close to people. That'll help you initially. And then with strangers... Again, it'll take time. Occasionally someone might say no. Occasionally someone might like flip you the, I won't do that because I might get like excess. Someone might flip you the bird, but maybe you can capture the bird in slow motion. And you've got that cliche shot that you've wanted. And yes, I've had confrontations, but it's very, very rare. I mean, I'm not sticking my camera right in someone's face. I'm kind of using body language. I'm getting close. You develop little tricks like this one here. Like often I'll, I'll shoot, like say you're my subject. I'll shoot you. I'll shoot you. That sounds really mean, but I'll, I'll shoot you and then I'll look somewhere else and then people look in that direction. It's just a little trick people use because it, they think like wherever you're looking is what you're photographing, not where you're aiming the camera. So that's a little trick. Um, but again, that's my advice is I would start with photographing someone you know, get used to photographing people up close and personal, get their permission first, and then just slowly work your way closer. And I know people want to avoid confrontation. No one likes confrontation. I'm not a big fan of it. I've learned how to deal with it. Just work on it slowly. You'll shed that fear. Slowly you'll be able to get closer to people. You'll learn people's body language and faces and things like that. It's a shame whenever I see people's fear of something dictate their style in photography because it shouldn't work that way. That's it for today, guys. Stay tuned for part two. I will lead off with light. I'm going to talk about the mistakes I see people make with light. You guys out there in street photography, if you have any questions for me, you can ask me in the comments section. Again, don't forget to check out that Moft stuff I talked about. They're a great company. I, I use them all the time when I'm on the road, when I'm at home. Down here in my YouTube studio, upstairs in my home office, when I'm on the road doing my commercial work and personal project work, all their little contraptions, little devices work well together. Check those out. I have an affiliate link in the description box below, guys. Don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com, and don't forget to have a wonderful day.